Gilbert, Crown Jewel. I know you had to wake up at 9 a.m. to watch it. But man, <laughs> going and watching the pay per view was awesome. But the one that's st- the match that stole the night was the main event of the evening Logan Paul versus your tribal chief, Roman Reigns, the undisputed champion of the world. The head of the table, Roman Reigns. Gilbert, it was such a crazy match. It was a fun match. It was honestly everything that you were that you were expecting a Logan Paul to Roman Reigns match. And even with all the talk before. Are you sure? Expecting? Maybe uh, over-delivered, no? I No, and, and it really did. I mean, it was one of those matches. Like, I, I kind of wanted to see what Logan Paul would do against a bigger competitor. He's going to get up against The Miz. But then he gets to go up against a bigger competitor in Roman Reigns. And Roman knows, just like The Miz, they know how to control a match. But, man, Roman really let Logan do a lot of things. Like, he was messing him up throwing him around. He was uh, he was doing all kinds of stuff. He even hit him with a couple of Superman punches. I was really impressed with Logan Paul. I, I really, I know that some people are a little, uh, they're like, oh, we have to uh, talk about the Logan brothers. And then Jake I'm comes one of those out. People. I know you are. And then Jake comes out and he starts uh, punching people in the face. He starts dropping guys. He starts talking crap. So it was just one of those things where you're like, wow, okay. Gilbert, I'm sorry to say, and if for WWE fans, if you're fed up with the Logan brothers, I'm sorry, the, or the Paul brothers, they're here to stay. I know, and I know it frustrates a lot of fans. I'm not one of those. I embrace what the Logan, what the Paul brothers bring. I embrace what Logan Paul brings. The dude's athletic. He's lengthy. He is really unique, and he has a unique skill set that I think could benefit him in the future. Yeah, you're kind of going through what I'm going through with the boxing, with the Jake Paul, and you have Logan Paul and the pro wrestling kind of circuit there. And I kept like, I don't want to talk about this guy. I don't want to embrace a dude. And yeah, like his boxing skills or whatever, but he's entertainment. He knows how to sell a fight. And then now you're getting that with Logan. He's good on the mic. He has his YouTube channel. He has his TikTok, all that. We already know he has a personality, but can he wrestle? And that was the last step for me, Fernando. And you're showing me some of these highlights. You're, 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 you're like a coach out there breaking it down. You see this, you see that. And seeing him do the, the frog splash out there and a bunch of other flips that I can't even name what he's doing was really impressive for me. And then you bring in that whole aspect of having a personality, being good on the microphone. He was pretty much built to be a pro wrestler. There, I said it. He has a, a compliment on this show here. Come back, come there, back no, hey, hey, there you go. And the thing is that really... Uh, he's been taking wrestling uh, lessons from Shawn Michaels, wow. one of the best to ever do it in the ring on the mic. Then he also Fran- was Fran- real quick uh, when you said Shawn Michaels. Did you have the screaming in your in your in your head? Of the oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think I'm cute. I know I'm sexy. Yeah, sorry. I got the looks that. to drive the girls while I got the moves to really move them. Yeah, I'm gonna hit get hit with a copyright for either. Yeah, I was gonna say this. And down, then Shawn man. Michaels just goes, he starts going. I'm boom, just boom, the, boom. just exactly. The, yeah, I, just I, the, oh my god, I, the, I miss I miss watching HBK in the ring, man. He retired too early. I, I loved watching him, but he yeah, said but he was his time. We're going off topic, but he left for a bit because of the back problem. Then he yeah. came back. It was some great, great years after that. Just, just remember the good times. It's incredible the way that wrestlers are able to do that, that they leave and you're yeah. like, okay, are they going to be better? Like Edge, Edge with the fusion of his neck, he's gone for 10 years, comes back, and it's like he had never left. And you're like, wow, okay. And then the pandemic hits, and obviously that kind of ruined us getting to see a year of Edge. And then he had that injury. But, man, it, it's these guys take some years away, and they come back, and they look good. Um, but going back to the Logan Paul, yeah, so I'm gonna reel you back in. Yeah, Logan Paul, uh, he came in and it's like, okay, he's been help. He he came in and tag team with the Miz. The Miz is one of the best trash talkers in WWE. He's skillful in the ring, but the thing is, his him on the mic is great. Logan Paul learned from that because it's one thing to talk, yeah, to, to be able to talk crap. But you have to be able to talk crap in the ring. That's why I give guys like John Cena credit. John Cena doesn't need to use the B word. He doesn't need to use the A word, the S word. John Cena gives you crap, and he really insults you without having to curse. The Rock obviously does his typical shtick where 
Uh, he does use all the curse words, except for the F word, obviously. But he uses the curse words and all that stuff. Stone Cold Steve Austin does it as well, but Stone Cold does it in such an entertaining way that it makes you laugh. But The Miz also does it in a way kind of like John Cena, where they don't have to use curse words, and they really get their point across. Now, now that I think about it, because I, I gave Logan Paul such a hard time, but The Miz is such a perfect example. He was a, like a reality TV star, right? Like He wasn't even a wrestler. Yeah. But he was just so uh, likable, or not mean likable, but he had a, per- per- a persona, a good energy. And that's like half the battle, maybe even most of the ba- battle, right, Fernando? It's like, you need, need to get the spotlight, you need the attention, and then the rest of you can learn. I know the people who have been doing the wrestling for many years, it might be a little bit of a slap in the face, like, hey, I've been doing I've been training my butt off. But they understand this business, you, be- you better be magnetic, electric. And so far, Logan Paul has done that. And then you bring in the wrestling. So great example there that you brought with the Miz there. And it's funny because uh, there's a movie called uh, Fighting With My Family. It's about yeah. Paige from WWE. The reason why I point that out is because, yeah, some of the movies a little Disney for me. But there's yeah. a scene where Paige grabs the microphone and uh, Vince Vaughn tells her, sell me. Uh, well, I'm a girl. I'm, I'm just like you guys. What the hell is that? sell me who the hell are you and that's what some people can't do that's what even actors sometimes come in and they're they're flat like they're they think that they're gonna just off of their name they're gonna be able to to get by and know you have to have a different kind of personality and logan paul has it logan paul's getting cheered at times he's getting booed at times the only thing that really threw me off gilbert was at times you would hear roman Rome and but you thought you'd hear him Logan. So it's like you couldn't differentiate yeah. which one you were listening to. But um, but Logan has a skill. The only shame, the only part I'm pissed off about Gilbert, I don't know if you saw this, but um, and this just makes the legend even crazier. Uh Logan Paul announced on uh on social media that he has a torn meniscus. Oh, an damn. MCL and potentially a torn ACL. I saw that. I forgot about that. So, uh, so what sucks is that obviously that means what six, seven months. That means no WrestleMania for Logan Paul. Uh, so that's going to be very disappointing, huh? I said letdown. I never thought it I would say that. I'm going to miss Logan Paul. He was just finally getting I, I my want, attention. Exactly. I wanted to see what he was going to do at WrestleMania, uh, and who knows? Maybe he. I mean, torn meniscus, MCL. Yeah, no, there's no way. That's December, January, February, March. Yeah, that's five months. Well, Fernando, this was a show first take. We'll be having a controversy. Is Logan Paul injury prone? (laughs) (laughs) And that's why why Compass is better than all those other shows (laughs) because we don't do that kind of crap. But it's just, it it just, and you know what's funny? He even said on his, uh, him and his brother were on Instagram and he said this happened almost, uh, a fourth or a half of the way into the fight. So he did some of those stunts that you saw Gilbert before this, some of the, some of the throwing themselves off of, uh, of, of stuff and, and, and all these Superman punches and all this stuff. He did that all with a uh, potentially a torn meniscus MCL and almost ACL. So some of those moves that he was doing, he did on one leg. So that's even more impressive, but here Gilbert, I'm going to give you the most impressive thing of the night. So Logan uh, ends up grabbing a phone and look what he does. This is honestly, this is great. Look what he does. Uh, he has, so he's on the top turnbuckle, and he has uh, Roman Reigns on the announcement table. Obviously, not the English one. It's on the on the, the uh, yeah, the or some some other announce table, but it's obviously not the English one. But listen oh, to what Logan Spanish Paul Spanish announce table for now. Look, I don't know why. To, what Logan Paul to say. Saudi, this is what you wanted. You're going viral, Roman. Look at that. That is Ooh, a frog splash. Can you listen to that again? This is what you want. Pretty far, too. You're going viral, Roman. Listen to when the stomachs hit, when they hit body to body. Listen. To that. Yeah. Saudi. This is what you want. So, this is just incredible to me. I mean, yeah, you have to be athletic to be able to make that jump. And then with a phone in his hand, and Roman just takes it. I mean, it, it was one Where of those Where did he get things. the phone from, anyways? Oh, I think uh, Jake pulled it out and gave it to oh. her. Oh, his boys were there right there on the side. Nice. His boys were there. They got involved in the match, too. They ended up fighting against uh, the Usos. The Usos grabbed him, threw him in the ring. 
messed them up. Jake came in and he messed them up. Uh, both of the Uso brothers. The only thing is, is that my Daniel got mad because in one of those, uh, Roman goes up to pin Jake Paul or Logan Paul, and he's like, "Where the hell is Jake signing autographs? Like, why didn't he run in and save his brother?" <laughs> and uh, so he was a little bit mad about that. But I was interested, Gilbert, because my question was, if we're not, so my question is. If Logan Paul would be healthy right now and you brought in Jake, does that mean that Jake could potentially be doing some things with WWE at WrestleMania? Could we have seen them tag team against maybe the Usos or against maybe the New Day and uh, maybe kind of start a rivalry there? That would have been fun. I mean, I don't know if uh, I don't know if uh, I know that Jake's not done with the boxing thing. I think he still wants to do it, but I still thought it would be fun if. Uh, if uh, he would have done that, I mean, I don't know what you think. Maybe he has a chance to make it. You know, maybe like he has like a like a quick couple minute you know match and, and let Jake Paul do most of the work for Logan. Uh, I, I bet they'll find a way to kind of get him in there. You know, I don't know if he would be a full strength, but he could do something there. But yeah, maybe they were trying to set set something up with like a rivalry there uh, with the bloodline against uh, the the brothers here. So. Uh, Def or not the Rome, not Roman, not Roman Reigns being a part of it because you know he has other plans and you've been uh, hinting at it the whole time here on Combat Compass. But that definitely would have been a good uh, match, and it is like I mentioned a little, little bit of a letdown because I was finding, uh, you know, showing some respect here for Logan Paul. Yeah, no, and I mean that's gonna be the that's that's a shame that we're not gonna be able to see him because man, the kid is talented. He has something, and then obviously, but now. The WWE universe now knows it, knows what I've been knowing since I saw him fight the Miz at SummerSlam is that Logan Paul can hang. Now it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, he's not going to be an everyday wrestler that comes in and wrestles every other night or whatever, but he could be a good guy to have <coughs> for the big main events. Now, Gilbert, you don't have to bring back the old stars like before. That was the problem with Vince McMahon. He would depend too much on The Undertaker on uh mick foley on some of these older guys to come in and be like oh hey we need you to rescue us you don't need to do that anymore you can rely on some of these guys like logan paul like um pat mcafee ding uh you can rely on some of these guys to come in here and wrestle and give you a good show and so that's the that's the interesting part i wonder if more guys will come over and do some more stuff with wwe especially if they train and and uh triple h kind of has them on retainer and kind of has them back and says okay hey you want to Stephen amell from arrow you want to go wrestle go ahead let's let's do it or or uh or pat or, or logan you want to go wrestle like maybe train some more guys up like that I know there's a lot of NFL players who don't make it to the NFL that maybe could be good. Not uh, the guy that I, I don't like is almost uh, he's six, seven foot four. He's just too big. He's one of those guys. He played basketball at Baylor, but like other guys like that are smaller. I, I would be interested to see them. Uh, I would be interested to see those kinds of guys in WWE. Like Dwight Howard, I know has been flirting with the idea of going to WWE. So I'd be interested to see something like that. If Dwight Howard would, uh, I know he just signed with a Shanghai, a team in Shanghai or, or Taiwan or something like a basketball team, but I know he's been flirting with the idea of, uh, going to WWE. So having guys like that, having guys train, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I think it'd be unique, uh, so that you don't have to rely on the old heads like you used to. And now you can rely on this new generation of, uh, wrestlers. Yeah, no, I like that. It's, it's a good way of kind of approaching it. You need, you need that pipeline to uh, uh, to be vibrant and, and ready to go. And and you lost one in, in Logan Paul for a little bit, not too long. Yeah. Uh, no. But you got to keep looking and and because WrestleMania is going to be big in Los Angeles. Yeah, it could probably be The Rock. That's kind of going back to the in old In front well. of the millions and millions of The Rock of the supporters. Rock yeah, there you go. Uh, which will be awesome. But definitely like. I feel like wrestling, you know how they say for the next day, the Raw show, the Monday, they yeah. bring the new stars, yeah, yeah. the next generation. But it'd be kind of cool for WrestleMania, the actual, the actual two-day event. You're feeling like, oh, there's a lot of stars here. This is what they're doing. This is Triple H right here, building that the, the, the minor leagues with NXT and doing this thing. So definitely got to look ahead because I was tired of that too. Maybe that's why I was a little kind of thrown off. Like I like the kind of nostalgia factor there. But I like how many times I have to see Undertaker rise from the dead and give me the retirement ceremony for the 20th time in a row. Yeah, and I mean, I love The Undertaker. I loved watching him wrestle. I thought his last really good match was against, uh, it was the match, was it against CM Punk? I can't remember, but there was like a couple of matches where I'm like, uh, oh no, against Bray Wyatt, he did all right. But after having the streak broken, it kind of fell off, he kind of fell off a little bit. 
So that was kind of sad to see, but, um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely, and you know what the Monday night raw after WrestleMania is always really good. So I'm interested to see, like you said, who are some of the guys that they're going to bring out and Gilbert, I don't know, maybe I'm teasing something, but Ooh, what triple H has an idea of who will defeat Roman Reigns for undisputed title. Wow. Okay. Ooh. That's a hey, that and I, and you know what we're getting close to it because WrestleMania season's right around the corner. There we go. So I don't Stay know. Tuned. I you know I I I have a guess in who I want, but it, it, it sounds like a segment that you're gonna have me uh, come on and and, and discover and break it down. So of course, because uh, I just I like teasing. I like teasing a little bit. I'm like that. That's what we're gonna talk about uh, next time. But yeah, no, definitely. Uh, if I had some flowers here, I would definitely throw them Logan Paul's way. Dude, you made a believer in me. And it's hard. It's hard to make a believer in me because I know exactly what it takes. Are you listening, WWE? I know exactly what it takes to make a good wrestler, to tell a good storyline. And I love the storyline leading into it. I like the whole, oh, he has a, they were saying, Gilbert, that he had surgery when he was a, younger where they had to put screws and all this stuff in his knuckles. So that's why when he delivers a punch, he'll knock you out. So that he has screws and all this stuff. So that was interesting. And then I love the aspect of you're not facing Floyd Mayweather right here. You're facing the tribal chief, the uh, head of the table. He's in his prime. And then obviously Roman laughing and going, hey, for all the followers that you've brought your tribal chief, you can be uh, you can be uh, you can be uh, uh, you can fight on the card on. Uh, you can be the third in my card. Anytime you want. So uh, so some good stuff from there. I think it's only going to get better. I just think that. WWE did a good job. It was a big star. They handled it well. The match was great. And I really do feel like uh, WWE is improving when it comes to its pay-per-views and the outcome. So I definitely am excited about um, uh, War Games. You should be excited about that too, Gilbert. Here, it's, oh, I, it's, well, I haven't shown it to you yet. They put two, two uh, WWE rings together. They combine two WWE rings and they do a steel cage around it with barbed wire and all this other stuff. It's called War Games, so it's instead it's it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting pay per view. Pay per view? Didn't yeah. they just have an event like I mean like an actual match like that not too long ago? Yeah, it like... was kind of it was a uh, the Seth Rollins and, and yeah, Matt Riddle, but one. it wasn't really like that. It was just like yeah, it was kind of like that. But this is different. This is like an NXT creation that that uh, that Triple H had a couple of years ago, and then he calls it the War Games. So it'll be fun. I'm hoping we can see uh, the the Roman Reigns and the Bloodline versus the Judgment Day. That'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, War Games coming up soon. But uh, yeah, Gilbert, I mean, I'm definitely excited. Logan Paul, you deserve your flowers. I don't know if Gilbert. Gilbert's giving you some compliments. Hey, that's a that's a tough seller too because Gilbert's not a big uh, Paul Brothers guy. So for you to get a, a golf clap from Gilbert, that's that's saying a lot. Yes, and I think I said he's built for this pro wrestling lifestyle. There you go. That's a big compliment. That's a huge compliment. Yeah. So there you go. That's, that was our, that's our take on Logan Paul versus Roman Reigns.